Norman Carden A300 amplifier. And Organist 1982 and I have been using this amplifier a lot ever since I repaired it. Sometimes we'd have it on 12 hours a day. Sometimes it got left on overnight and just kept on going. But we had several failures with it just related to the design of the amp. And I'm going to try and improve it with some modifications now. What had happened the first time was we noticed that a brand new RCA 6V6 was arcing inside of it. And this uh, output stage is designed to use 7408s originally, which are like a, I think like a specialty uh, 6V6 for hi-fi use. But 6V6 has the same rating, so I had used some of the original 7408s, but one of them got broken uh, before I bought it, so I put it in 6V6. And anyway, one time an RCA 6V6 started arcing inside, so I replaced it. But uh, another time, there was a problem with this phono preamp tube. I think the tube filament might have shorted out, and it caused the output tubes to start glowing red on the plates. The thing about the original design of this A300 is it has all four of the cathodes of the output tubes connected together. And for the cathode bias resistance, it uses the filaments of these two 12AX7 tubes wired in series, and these are the left and right phono preamp tubes. Well, the last time I had the problem was just a little while ago. I noticed that uh, there was some hum in the speakers, and then this tube's filament started glowing really loudly, and then there started to be arcing, and the plate started glowing red on the uh, one of these 6V6 tubes. And uh, finally, then this, we, we, I saw smoke, and this electrolytic capacitor had uh, burst open and started smoking because I think there was a short in the, uh, in the uh, 636 or the 7408, probably from the screen grid to the cathode, and it burned out the filament on this tube, and unfortunately, I think it went down the phono lines back into the phono cartridge and burned out part of the phono cartridge. So needless to say, I wasn't happy. Now right now I've got the Pioneer Solid State Amp uh, filling in at home. But I'm going to try to upgrade this from what was kind of a value amplifier, kind of a somewhat cheaply designed amplifier to be a little more robust for long-term constant use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the 6V6s with 6L6GC and 5881. I got two 5881s, which is like 6L6GB, and then I got two 6L6GCs, uh, which I'm going to put in here. The thing is, though, that 6L6GC requires 0 0.9, uh, 900 milliamps on the filament, while the 6V6 only requires, uh, only requires 0.45, so you need twice as much filament current. So that's why now, in the test uh, purpose, in the test setup here, I've only got two of the 6L6s in the sockets. What I'm going to need to do is install an additional filament transformer to supply the additional or the other 6L6s. And I'm going to make a independent DC supply for the phono preamp tube filaments so that they're not interacting at all with the output tubes. So if the tube filament should short out, it won't cause a loss of bias. Or if there's arcing in an output tube for some reason, it won't end up destroying the phono preamp tubes or going back into the phono cartridge somehow. What I'm using for a cathode bias resistor is a 280 ohm 20 watt resistor. And the resistor seems to be... Uh, it's getting a little bit warm, but I think it's within its, uh, within its limits. And I'm going to use two cathode bias resistors, one for each group of tubes. And I tried putting a capacitor on the cathode uh, bias, or the, the uh, cathode, from cathode to ground. It didn't seem to make any difference, so I won't bother with the cathode bypass capacitor. Now one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to check voltage on the, uh, let's check the plate voltage at the 7408 socket. And you'll see that it's 367 volts. That's beyond the limits of a 6V6GT, beyond the recommended limits, that is. 
because they recommend a maximum plate voltage of 350 volts on 636 GT. And now I know why this amp sounded so powerful, because it was really driving the 6B, V6 beyond its ratings. And maybe for intermittent use, that's okay, but for 24 hour a day use, for long term use, we want something a little more stable that's not pushing the tube to its limits. 6L6GC I think is rated for about 550 volts on the plates or so. I don't remember exactly, but I know that it can take the plate voltage that is uh, subjected to the tubes uh, here. So now what I'm going to do is just demonstrate some music played back on the uh, A300 using the 5881 tubes. Here's the Pioneer CD player. I got this uh, thanks to South JK and I really appreciate having it in here. I always like a CD player as a test signal generator because for one thing you can get line level output and you can get adjustable output if you need to test a power amp by itself. It's got enough power from the headphone jack to drive a power amp and you can control the level. Plus, you know you've got good quality sound from a CD, or on a radio tuner, you've got a lot of compression and some distortion, and you can't do a really accurate check of distortion with a radio signal. So now I'm going to just try a selection from the CD. This is actually a CD I made myself. recorded it off of the radio. It's got plenty of bass. another selection here. Just turn this knob to change the track. So now when I get the other filament transformer in and redo this filament supply, should have a really good working heavy duty amp. I don't need these tubes to be working right now for a line level input because it can go into the next stage of amplification which has an AC filament. So pretty soon we'll get this working with some 6L6GCs.